My name is Harold York. I'm a research scientist in Pasadena, California, and I will be talking about the types of elasticity. Elasticity is a physical property of materials which has to do with the fact that when you deform them, they want to return into their original shape. So let me explain this on the board. So we think of elasticity uh, in the sense of stretching a rubber band and it wants to return to its original shape. But also we could have a metal bar that we bend in one dimension and it wants to return. That's a bending uh, a deformation. Or we can twist the bar and have a, a twisting deformation. It wants to return to its original shape. And for most materials that are elastic, that we call elastic, this relation is linear. We have the force from elasticity and that's proportional to uh, some constant, which is called a spring constant, times the distance that we say we stretch something. But we could also write a similar formula for bending or twisting. An example would be a guitar string. When we pull on it, it vibrates. It goes back and forth between uh, the two positions, the overcompensated position and the original position that you pulled it in. Now, not all materials uh, remain uh, linear if we stretch them too far. Let's look at this curve of the force as a function of distance. If we start out by pulling on a spring, we can, at first of all, it's linear, but actually we can start deforming the spring and it uh, becomes overextended. When we now let the spring go, it wants to return almost to its original shape, but it doesn't quite make it because it's been stretched too far. So the three forms of elasticity I've talked about are the stretching, the bending, and the twisting or torsional modes of elasticity. Thank you for watching. The elasticity of rubber. Elasticity is the ability of a material to return to its original shape after it has been stretched. The force that you apply to the material is called as stress. There is a limit to the amount of stress one can apply to a material before it reaches its elastic limit and deforms irreversibly. Materials like rubber have high elasticity. This is because it is made up of millions of long and bendable chains of molecules. You can apply stress on these chains in any direction, but they will always return to their original shape. Rubber can be harvested from the rubber tree by making an incision in the bark and collecting the white sap that oozes out. This is known as latex and is completely natural. Ammonia is added to the natural latex to keep it from hardening before it goes through a chemical process to enhance its strength and durability. It is then distributed to different factories to make rubber bands, balls, elastics and many things you use daily. Elastic objects such as a spring can store elastic potential energy when they are stretched. For example, this happens when a catapult is stretched back. When an elastic object such as a spring is stretched, the increased length is called an extension. The extension of a truly elastic object, again such as a spring, is directly proportional to the force applied, provided the limit of proportionality is not exceeded, meaning the object being stretched doesn't become permanently deformed, such as when a spring doesn't return to its original position after the load is removed. This proportionality is called Hooke's Law, and the force is equal to the spring constant times the extension. The spring constant is measured in newtons per meter and is different for different objects and materials. 
You work it out by carrying out an experiment with an elastic object and adding a load or force to it. You then measure the extension of the object and sub the numbers into the formula to get the spring constant. The greater the value of K, the stiffer the spring. So, most of us have heard of gravity before and think of it as the force that holds us on the ground. And whereas that is true, gravity in a more exact sense is the attractive force between all objects that have mass. And since essentially everything in the universe is made of matter, and matter is anything that has mass and takes up space, that means that gravity is the force that holds all those things together. Which brings us to what is commonly called or what is known as the law of universal gravitation. And the law of universal gravitation states that all objects with mass are attracted to each other. So every object in the universe is attracted to every other object in the universe. The magnitude of that, detract, of that attraction depends on the mass of each object and the distance between them. So right now, yes, there's a rock on Mars that's being attracted to you right now and you are being attracted to it except that neither of you are very massive and there's a large distance between you. As the distance between the forces increases, the f attractive forces become weaker and as, they, as the forces or as objects increase in mass, the force between them grows um, stronger. <clears throat> which brings us to our discussion of mass and weight, which students commonly get confused. Okay, mass is the amount of matter in an object and mass does not change depending on your location so if you're a thousand kilograms on earth you're going to be a thousand kilograms on the moon but weight is a gravitational force and it changes with your location so you may weigh a hundred pounds on earth but only 16.6 .6 pounds on the moon all right force or weight is a force and a vector so therefore because of the vector it has size and direction your weight, your size of your weight would be your actual weight. So if you're 100 pounds and the direction is going to be pretty much straight down towards the center of the earth. This brings us to our next force, which is friction. And friction is a force that opposes or that means goes against the movement between two surfaces that are in contact with each other. So, for example, in this picture, we can see that the box wants to move in the, the right direction. And because friction is the force that opposes that, you can see that friction is moving in or to the left. Right? So friction is an unbalanced force that would be acting on the box, in this case, to slow it down. Now I'm going to talk about a sp specific type of friction. And that is called static friction. The word static um, simply means still. Uh, and static friction is the force between two surfaces in contact that keep them from sliding when a force is applied. So in this case, uh, this guy here is applying a force to this box, but the box is not moving. So in this case, this guy is experiencing static friction because the box is still. So even though a force is being applied, the forces are balanced and the force pushing the box equals the force of the static friction pushing in the opposite direction and therefore the box isn't moving. Now once he applies enough force to overcome the static friction and the box starts to move then he will be experiencing what's called sliding friction. This brings us to our elastic forces. And an elastic force occurs when a material is either stretched or compressed. Okay. And the first elastic for force we're going to talk about is experienced on the right side or shown on the right side here. And that's the force of tension. And it's sort of like a rubber band. So when the force on an object is pulling in opposite directions and stretching it, that's a tension force. Now, opposite of that, when forces are applied um, towards each other and an object is in between they squeeze it and that's called a compression force so you just need to remember that 
um, there are two elastic forces that we're going to discuss and they are compression which is when objects are squeezed and tension which is when objects are stretched. The last force we're going to discuss in this lesson is called the normal force and the normal force is the force exerted by an object that is perpendicular to the surface of the object. And now remember parallel means sort you know they're side by side running in the same direction like railroad tracks but perpendicular would be sort of like a t-shape or you know it's at a 90 degree angle and you can see here that the normal force is perpendicular to the surface of this box. Uh, also you can notice that the normal force in most cases uh, on a flat surface will directly oppose uh, gravity. Here is a catapult. This catapult currently has a force being applied onto it. Gravity pulling it down. The weight, the mass of the catapult also pulling it down. This elastic band here, which you can hear, is stretched. This stretched force shows its elasticity. This elastic band has potential energy, a stored type of energy that can be released when the catapult is fired, like so. stored energy from the elastic band will travel through the arm of the catapult and will be released when it gets to that.